Hey everybody, welcome to the video, welcome to the channel. My name is Mike, and today we are back working on this old barn slash gymnasium slash world headquarters. And I've been lying to you, because I keep telling you this thing is 1930s, because that's what I was initially told. I talked to a guy that actually built the arches when he was a kid, whenever they did this project, 1950s, confirmed from the source. I was off only by 20 years, my bad. But we are back to work on this. And we have done a tremendous amount of work to this old building. Let me show you the inside, get you caught up to speed in case you've missed a few of them or you're new to the channel, and then we'll get going. The reason we call it a gymnasium is because that's what it was. It was a gymnasium for the high school that used to sit over there on that ledge. What we started with doing, that beam was put in by Dirt Perfect to myself whenever he first bought the building years ago. And then we've added these beams here. And we're in the process of doing the same thing on this side, taking that beam and continuing it down. All this stuff is supposed to be moved out today and that should give us the space to do it. The reason we're doing that is because those arch trusses, for whatever reason, have failed. If you look down inside the building here, you can see how it's squatting out on us. And if we do a little aerial fly in here, it doesn't take much to see what I'm talking about, how those arches have kind of started delaminating and squatting down over the years. So what we're trying to do is to get that roof line lifted back up. What we accomplished in the previous video with getting these poured, this wall here, I don't know if you can tell it, has a pretty heavy lean. From the top of that to the bottom of that, this wall was out six inches. And the reason for that really isn't known. We've got two running theories with everybody I've talked to about it. And just looking at it, this back wall also, which is a poured concrete wall, has the same amount of lean matched to it. And you can see in the post pretty clearly, I'm not doing anything funky with the camera. You got some pretty heavy lean. So what we don't know is if the trusses started to fail and as it squatted, it put outward pressure on the walls and pulled everything and caused it to move. Or if that back wall failed and it pushed in and that caused the trusses to start to fail. We're not sure the order of operations, but either way, the walls have moved and the trusses are coming down. So the goal is to get those arch trusses lifted back up into place and then eventually try to rebuild them from the inside by attaching onto the ones that exist and continuing those laminations further inward to the building with some glue and screws and bolts and the whole nine yards. But before we could do that, because we were concerned that as we lifted, we'd put some extra additional pressure on this CMU wall, which by the way, confirmed is not core poured. We thought the columns were core poured at least. It's all just triple core block. There's no internal concrete or anything in that. I thought the columns were core poured. They are not, as it turns out. It's just triple core block. That's all everything is here. And if you know anything about CMU blocks, you know there's really not a whole lot holding them together in the first place. It's pretty much just the mortar joints. And you can see there's quite a bit of cracking and failing already. Majority of these joints have already been broken loose. So in preparation for the lift and an effort to save this wall so we can still maybe possibly utilize it in the future, we went ahead and poured these buttresses on the outside. That locks those columns into place and will hopefully, and fingers crossed, will prevent this wall from crumbling whenever we go to lift. Well, the next step in the process is getting this mess all picked up and cleaned out. And then we're going to take this opening right here and we're going to blow it out. That means we're going to have to build a temporary beam right up in here, jack it up and get some pressure on that and off the wall and then cut these concrete blocks out and then put a permanent beam across there to carry the weight. So the first step is pretty obvious. Let's just get some of this trash picked up and out of the way. Now we're gonna leave this covered yet because even though it didn't get below freezing last night, it does have a chance to get into the 20s tonight. I don't wanna risk the top of that freezing and popping off in the future. So we'll just leave this covered for a few more days, but we can go ahead and get all this stuff out of the way. That way we can get the backfill done.
I decided to just go grab the 755. We'll use that to kind of polish this up a little bit. I think it'll be able to get in the nooks and crannies between these. We got those backfilled good enough that's going to settle down quite a bit and whenever we answer some questions you'll understand why we're not too concerned about how the backfill looks right now this all polished up looks good found that sign by the way nothing fancy about it thought maybe it's a cool porcelain sign it's not it's just a uh, cut vinyl on coil stock but there she is and got the lumber moved down here for the next step you want to see something that has me excited look at this the first FedEx delivery to the world headquarters. How cool is that? Sad thing is, turns out, can't even use them the way I wanted to, but we got it now. That's neat. The other thing we're doing in today's video is we're gonna be answering a ton of questions that you guys are leaving in the comments from the previous videos. It's just easier to do it this way. One of those big questions is, why just one, two, three, four? Why not those two down there? Well, let me show you. For starters, Neither one of these has any play out. They're both standing very strong. The other thing is that one has an interior wall that runs the length of it on the inside. And that's right behind that piece there. So it's already strong enough this way. That wall's not really gonna push against that interior wall and it should hold really well. And that one hasn't moved yet at all either. So I'm really not too concerned about those. These were the four worst ones, which is why I wanted to pay the most attention to them. And the other reason, which I think you're catching on to, is we're getting ready to, and then we got two good strong buttresses on either side of that new opening. So I gotta move some stuff around. Mike's slowly been working on getting a lot of his stuff out, and today we went through upstairs and went through keep trash cell kind of a pile. Um, I don't think this is his. Look what I found. Huh? I like it. Can you even see it? There it is.
So it's just tacked together with those three inch screws right now, but I got these four and a half inch timber locks. I'm gonna run a bunch of those in there to lock that beam all tight together. And then that'll be set for the morning and then we can get her lifted up. And I'm excited about that. So I just wanna do a little bit of a test run. We're not gonna be able to do the whole thing tonight, but I just wanna go up with it a little bit. We don't really want to lift a whole lot. We just want to take the weight off of that concrete so we can cut that out, get it knocked down, and then get the new beam in place. But I'd like to see just a little bit of a gap underneath that sill plate. Take you up top here. You can see we're starting to get, in a few places, a little bit of a gap, especially down on that end. I don't see any anchor bolts, which doesn't necessarily matter for this step as much as it does the ripping the concrete step out, but it's got to have something somewhere. Hey, what's that? It's like some old ski bottles. And that is cool. Oh, a double cola. And then a double cola money back bottle. What are the odds that's still valid? That's kind of cool. Following morning, about 22 degrees, but it's supposed to get up to 40 something later today. And the next four or five days are in the upper 30s at night. So we'll peel these off last thing today so we can actually get a peek at them and see how they look. No bolt in that section. No bolt in that section. Oh dear. No bolt in that section. And I need a peek on that side. There's an egg. Sorry about that. So hopefully as we go, we start to see, we're gonna use that dirt spot right there as our reference. Hopefully we see just a touch of a gap open up. We don't really wanna lift it, we just wanna make sure we've got the weight of it. New tripod also came in and the new lens for you guys came in, so hopefully not as much uh, distraction. The other lens, it gets scratches from sparks and stuff when we're working, part of it, but they're replaceable, so that's nice. See the gapage in that dirt line now? And we got just a little bit of gap all the way down. Which means we've got the weight of the wall above it. And I don't know why I say we all the time. Somebody asked me that. I guess it's my multiple personalities. It'd be easiest to push it in, but I really need it to come down and out so it doesn't hit the jacks and stuff. Yeah. That's why it's restricted. It's dangerous right here. I gotta break out a new tool I got. So I wanna try to cut a clean line as much as I can along that wall. Make it a little bit easier to put the uprights in whenever we get to that point. So old Weber, which is the same company that sent me that demolition hammer we're gonna be using some more of in a second, sent me something to help out with that. 
I'll put a link in the description for both the demolition hammer and this contraption. We'll see how she goes. I am hoping it comes with a blade because I forgot to read that part. There's no blade. Oh, yeah, it is. It's right here. <laughs> okay. Okay. It's an electric concrete saw. I don't know what you're thinking, an electric saw. Not sure a fella could just borrow Dirt Perfect's gas saw or a fella can always go rent those. You can rent stuff like that at the box stores if you need it. But I figured this would come in handy because we got a lot of projects coming up, especially with that Indiana limestone when we do some work with that. The other thing I love about the electric is if you look at the price, it's like a sixth the cost of a gas saw. The other thing when it comes to doing that masonry work, whenever I'm making a bunch of cuts, I don't want to start the saw up every time I got to cut a block. The main reason I got this for was to cut up that limestone block whenever we get to using that. It's going to come in handy on this as well. But I don't want to start a gas saw every time I got to cut a single block. I think this is going to be a good exception. They have several different sizes. It does come with the water attachment if a fellow wants it, and it is GFCI protected for that reason. I got the 12 inch because a 12 inch blade is a pretty common sized blade. Well, it's definitely a lot lighter than a gas saw. That's for sure, a lot easier to, definitely a lot easier to get to height, but I need to take those off so I can get to those blocks. We're kind of lucky because there's a joint, uh, let's see, joint and then score it, joint and score it. So that works out pretty well. We'll get this mess picked up after we get the beam into place. I want to get the temporary permanent solution installed first. So we're just going to do the same way we did this beam, which is what's always worked easiest for me. We build the temporaries, we set them in place. We put that stop on it, which also holds it up in place. We'll attach it to the back side of that sill plate. Then we'll build the header in place up top, jack it up and get some pressure on it. And then we'll get good tight measurements for the actual supports on the edge. That way we can kind of tap them into place and make sure they're real nice and tight where it needs to be. So this one will be four ply, four two by 12s screwed and glued together. This is that construction adhesive I like to use, comes in the form of spray foam. Oh, sticky hands, it's inevitable. Then I'm just tacking it together with a couple small screws 
and we'll sandwich the whole thing with all those timber locks here in a second. Right now, I need to just not fall on me. Yep. Ah. Then we're going to lift this side up until it's tight so that'll hold it in place. Make sure it's not doing anything goofy up here. No, looking good. Go just uh, yeah, right about there. Basically just putting some pressure on it, that way I'll hold that side in place, then we can undo that, do the same thing. Keep going up with it. It's looking good on both sides, get some good pressure on her now. I want it to be tight so that when we go to set this down, it doesn't move. It's just as happy where it's at. Go up just a little bit more on this one, and then we should be ready for the uprights. So we got that where we want it. Next step is three two by eights smashed up against this wall. This wall is not perfectly clean, so they're not gonna be perfect, but I'll explain here in a second. I think we'll answer a lot of questions. I haven't talked about this part yet, but might as well share with you the long-term plan for the bottom side. 91, but we're gonna go 91 and an eighth and make sure we gotta get it in there pretty snug. That is a fine looking opening, huh? Look at all the room for activities now. We still gotta drop this tent beam out of the way, but I'm just curious what we ended up with. Seven foot 10, 94 inches, almost an eight foot door. Not bad, that's wide enough to get smaller vehicles in for sure, and definitely the 755 with forks, which opens up a huge potential for us. We can now store things on pallets in here and just do whatever we want. We got a little cleanup I'd like to get done today because I'd like to go get the Fubaru and bring her down here and get her out of that barn because we're getting ready to do an off-grid shop build on the second channel and I need that barn completely empty. Well, I suppose let's move this temp beam, get it out of the way, then we'll go into heavy cleanup and organization mode. Go ahead and let the pressure off these. We're going to hear some popping and cracking as she sits down. That's it on that one. That's the weight off of it. Not too much talking, so that's good. That means we got good pressure on the beam. Okay. Smooth. That was smooth. Oh, that's neat. Oh, there it goes. Got it. Easy peasy.
Next thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to start sorting this out. Trash is going in the bucket. We're going to take a bucket load down to his dumpster. We're going to grab all that old mortar, get that out of here, and just try to organize everything to where I can get a spot to get the car in here. next thing is all these old bags of mortar this stuff's like 10 years old we're just going to throw it in the loader and take it up to the same spot we took that block and whenever we get a good freeze or whenever it dries out we'll take all that down and use that for fill at the entrance that approach to the uh the bridge we built So for the time being, we're just going to leave that in the bucket and hope that it freezes up enough before I need this thing next time. And then hopefully I don't have to handle all those bags twice. We can just dump it right into the approach. I've got a little walking i got to do from the abandoned build site. Let's see if we can go get the old Fubaru fired up. It only took me a half hour to get all the parts. You guys are not going to recognize. I can't wait for what's coming for this. We're probably going to do it on the second channel. Just so we can maintain focus on the gym for the primary channel. But let's see if this old rig starts. All right. Master. We got some voltage. Fuel pump. I got to turn that on. There's my gauge so I know my four-wheel steering angle in the back. Fuel pump. Well, we'll just go slow and hope the jump box has enough voltage to make it down there. It'll be fine. I mean, the headlights are on for safety for crying out loud. What more is a fella need? Oh, she's peppy. 11.2 volts. We're running out though, so let's let's move. Kind of like an Ace Ventura vibe. It's going to be a bit of a tight squeeze. I think we can get her worked in there.
Shoot. Okay, new plan. We'll just make a hole and go straight in. I expected a few little surface voids, nothing too crazy though. We got this little spot there, not a problem. The rest of it looks really nice. Same spot here, a little bit bigger. It's that little web right there to prevent it from coming around. But the rest of it looks really nice. This one looks good all the way through. This one kind of has that same little spot. And right here, which would have been between pores. Again, there's a web right there, but the rest of it looks good. That stuff right there on the surface, that's just cosmetic. Structurally, the rest of it is solid. What I was worried about is we'd end up with some big old caving void, but it all looks really good considering the mix we used and the style of wall we got. I'm pretty dang happy with that. And those little cosmetic things can be fixed pretty easy with like a cement hull product or something similar to rub that out on. The same kind of thing that we would rub on this surface if we wanted to. The same th kind of thing to rub in these holes where the spray foam was at. If we wanted to rub that and dress it up, that's what we could do, which we will do on those. On the sides of those, I haven't quite decided what I want to do yet. But I do know what we want to do with the whole bottom side. The two big questions we get, one is, how big is this actual thing? The measurements, it's 75 by 45, which is somewhere total between both levels, around 6,500 square feet under roof, which is enormous and more than enough for us for a long time, which is, like we said, something we can grow into. The other big thing is how we're gonna straighten this wall, and I kind of addressed earlier, we're not gonna try to straighten this CMU wall. It's, I'm not saying it can't be done. I know people have done it, but I would never mess with straightening a CMU wall. That's the long-term plan, which is why I'm hesitant to tell you, because if something doesn't happen, immediately on YouTube, people always get all bent out of shape about it. But I want to tell you so you know what's going to come in the longer on this. The long-term plan is just what we did here, except longer. We got the building kind of split up into a half now. We'll take that half, jack it up, rip out that wall, pour a new ICF wall, a thick eight inch with steel grid in the middle of it, ICF wall that will then tie into these buttresses and that will replace that CMU wall, good level plumb, all that nice stuff. That's the long-term plan, we'll do both sides. But before we do that, we're gonna dig this ground down about two feet because we wanna dig down inside about two feet because that would give me a shop inside of there with a 10 foot ceiling and that would be amazing. We're gonna to try to eliminate some of those posts with some steel beams and things like that. But the long-term goal, dig down, replace that with ICF and get this whole thing squared away and to be usable. I don't wanna put time and money into this if it's something I can just use for storage. I want to make sure we're putting effort into this so it's something we can actually use for the long term. Short term, meaning the next video, we're back inside. We got two more beams to get in. We got some cabling we got to get ran across. We got to get some stuff, stabilize the rest away and get ready for the lift because that lift is going to happen before any of this happens. I also need to build a dump truck somewhere in there. I don't know because it's going to be super handy for this. That's all I got for this one. I hope it's enough and I hope I get to see you guys on the next one. This thing is exceeding my expectations.